Well, joining us to talk, talk more about this is Al Jazeera's economics analyst, Sama Al Shahad. Sama, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Okay, first of all, let's look at this solution that seems to have to, to have inspired some confidence in the markets a sort of controlled default by Greece, whereby it would default on 50% of its debt. What do you make of that? Well, I think the market has already factored in that Greece will default, that they will be getting what is a 50% haircut. So most uh, financial institutions, whether banks or insurance houses, have already written in a default. I think the big question is whether it will be an orderly default, and that's what the market is looking to see. And orderly here is the, 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 the crucial word. And by that, they want to see whether the ECB and the EU have actually got plans, institutions, mechanisms in plan to really contain the contagion of Greece, to make sure that whatever happens in Greece is a one-off, to almost tell the investors it's not going to happen in Spain, Portugal, Ireland, that Greece defaulting is a one-off, to really put protective arms around these other countries. Uh, I mean, the whole world economy now seems to be focusing on Greece. A few years ago, when everything started toppling, it was bad mortgages in the US. Is this all about the Eurozone? And why has it come about so suddenly? Okay, it actually hasn't come about quite suddenly. I think this is about a banking crisis in Europe. But why is the world now so focusing on it? It's because we are really on the verge of a huge financial crisis that will make what happened post Lehman's look like a walk in the park on a very sunny day. Why is that? It's because the international global economy is flatlining. America is on the verge of recession and Europe is in recession. Depending on what the Eurozone leaders, the 17 leaders do, that will really um, shape how deep and how severe that recession will be. Now, the truth of the matter is that Europe has got the money to get itself out of this problem. Europe has got the money to get the world out of its problem, but Europe hasn't got the political will to do that. Any of the solutions that we saw in the package earlier by Jonah, whether linked to the ECB or uh, expanding the FSF, requires change in laws, in treaties, and maybe the German constitution itself changing. Will they be allowed to do that is the big question. I mean, you mentioned the 17 leaders of the Eurozone. I mean, if there's one thing that the EU or even Eurozone is not known for, it's decisiveness and, you know, acting quickly with one voice. So I guess it all boils down to Germany that you hinted at. What does Germany actually need to do and can it do what needs to be done? The most fundamental thing is they need to recapitalize the banks. They need to shore up Europe's banks. Why? Because this isn't a sovereign debt crisis. We've been sold that story. It's a banking crisis that's been masquerading as a sovereign debt crisis. And let me explain to you how. 85% of all the money that goes into Greece, Greece uses to pay off its debts to banks. Germany and France have got the most skin in the game mm. because Germany's banks are exposed to something to the tune of 18% of her GDP to the sovereign debt of Italy, Portugal and Greece. Mm. So in effect, what we, I suppose it was easy, much easier for European politicians to sell to their electorates that they need to use their taxpayers' money to bail out a country rather than the banks. I think they saw how unpopular that was in America and how popular it was in Britain. So they decided to say it is bailing out Greece, when in effect it is about bailing out the banks. You cannot have a functioning economy without strong, solid banks. That's the one thing Europe doesn't have. It gets more worrying by the day. Sam Alshad, thank you so much for joining us.